who will be the victor of the last round of week four of MTGO Masters. We're both smiling now. Someone will be frowning soon. It, uh, based, based <laughs> off of, they, can uh, they can join me in the frowning club. That's right. That's right. Uh, based <laughs> off of Jake's hand here, Jake's hand looks pretty darn good. A little bit yeah. of interaction here. You got a Thought Siege. You got some top end with Shieldred. And uh, Jarvis isn't careful with those lands there. That Magus mm. of the Moon could be extremely problematic. Indeed. Considering Jarvis doesn't have any uh, Mana Dorks, no Wall of Roots, no Delighted Halfling. Just a, was going to squeak that grief ahead of schedule, but that's not going to happen now because it was discarded by Thorsies. Um, got a couple of Yorgwas that might be relevant later in the game. But it's, it's looking a little difficult for Jarvis just based on this hand. It's a little slower than I think he anticipated. Yeah, this is a really slow hand. And, and one thing to keep, well, this is interesting little back and forth, a little dichotomy here. One, Jarvis knows that Jake has multiple copies of Magus in the main deck because this, this stuff is all open deckless. So that's number one. But number yeah. two, uh, if you take a look at Jarvis's hand with these Yawgmoths, you know, like you can get a basic swamp right now if you Want to, but we've also seen Jarvis actively search up the surveil land. So yeah. um you you see the basic swamp found here via Verdant Catacombs as Jarvis falls down to 19. He has to be cognizant of the Magus of the Moon. Yeah. And he's done a decent enough job doing that. And the uh the ability to put grist on that young wolf <laughs> is a pretty nice step in the right direction here in the mid. A nice one mana planeswalker we have here. Or did. Yes, indeed. <laughs> did indeed. Um, yeah, like, Ag we, we both know how uh, Agra's Soul Cauldron is just a, a very strong card, and it's very it's heads up play from Jarvis just to get that Swamps into play, just because Jake does have a couple of Magus of the Moons in his main board. He also has two Blood Moons in the sideboard as well, so very aggressively planted towards the ramp players in the room, such as myself and Cedric. So this is actually a nice sequence here from Jake. Uh, the Magus of the Moon searching up two basic swamps, that's pretty easy because now his mana is going to work and Jarvis is, mm -hmm. I, is, is really not going to now because no basic green source to be able to cast that Wall of Roots. Windswept Teeth, of course, is a mountain in hand right now, so Jarvis's mana is a total mess as he's going to put a plus one, plus one counter here on that insect token, and Gris is going to start pumping out counters which is a way to get this Magus of the Moon off of the battlefield. But one thing I liked last turn was Jake, with the young wolf and the Agatha Soul Cauldron, allowed Jarvis to put a counter on there, then Grist activates, and then you bolt the young wolf, which mm. means that because it has a plus one, plus one counter on it, the persist will not happen, and it bites the dust for good. So, just a little unique exchange between the two. Here comes Absolutely. the Santa Claus. And here comes this Magus of the Moon. Looking to deal some damage here. Um, Jarvis decides not to trade. And we'll see what the follow-up is. Yeah, and, and I like the I like the no block there from Jarvis because yeah. you, you, you're gonna play around something like a not dead after all or one of those style of effects. Uh, mm. your life total is pretty high, so you're not in a rush to start chump blocking or anything like that. And some things can just in general go wrong. And when you've got your opponent's mana base kind of messed up like this, um, mm. you know, Jake, I like the attack because you're signaling that you have that style of card. And Jarvis is saying, I can kind of play through this right now because my life total is so high. Absolutely. And unfortunately for Jarvis, his hand is looking a little bit gunked up. As you mentioned earlier, Cedric, there's just no green source in play here. So these Wall of Roots and Ignoble Hierarchs have been kind of sad in Jarvis's hand right now because I'm sure he would love to play this York off if possible. And this is interesting here. We're going to have Shieldred's Edict. i make a token be sacrificed, which will allow... Oh, that was a really good draw. That's enough uh, draw. <laughs> yeah, that Orchestra Masters appears to be a really, really good draw here. Indeed. Let's see what the Arbus is going to do. Not that he can do a whole much. Hacking doesn't seem great. Just kind of waiting for that green source, to be honest. Yeah, now what's interesting is the last turn we saw Magus of the Moon willing to attack because the Agatha Soul Cauldron was tapped. 
This time the Icon Soul Cauldron is untapped. So if you do have that kind of block, cast not dead after all, that entire exchange, it's favorable here for uh, for Jarvis. So you're not going to mm. see an attack this time around. Instead, we're just going to see Beardsley pass the turn back with access to that Orcish Bowmasters and the copy of Not Dead After All, while Jarvis draws a pretty useless Wooded Foothills. <laughs> just another mountain. And proving that Max of the Moon is actually doing quite a lot of work. Even though it was, I'm sure, Jake uh, you know, curated his list towards you know Tron and Amulet Titan, um, doing a lot of da damage against his Golgari Yorkmoth deck as well. All right, so now here's the Agatha Soul Cauldron activation. It's going to remove the Delighted Halfling that was milled from the, I'm going to say, Insect Grist. And now where's this plus one, plus one counter going to attempt to go? Yeah. Got a few options here. Now, I suppose this is actually kind of interesting. Again, this is kind of learning uh, with Agatha Soul Cauldron. So by... By... Uh, by exiling the Delighted Halfling, uh, this thing can tap for black now to actually cast Yogma. Yes. So not only is it a Grist, but now it's also a Delighted Halfling, which allows you to play Yogmoth and get that on the battlefield. Here now comes the Orkish Bowmasters. I see a response here with the Bowmasters. So yeah. uh, this game, even though Jarvis's lands aren't cooperating, he's still able to function thanks to the power of the Soul Cult. Yeah. Agatha Soul Cauldron is making a great impression of a Mana Rock right now. So Jake responded with that Bowmaster, killed an insect token, Yogmoth's on the battlefield. Now I think things are probably going to start to get pretty tough here for Beardsley. Indeed. Jarvis needs to just like drawing a grist here would also be really nice. Being able just to deal with this magus of the moon just to free up his mana. But also yeah, but this I, is not dead after all as well. So. Yeah, but what I would say is right now, um, uh, I would say that Jarvis has the upper hand. Uh he's got the better mm -hmm. battlefield, uh, because he has an active Yogmoth and he has an active soul cauldron. He effectively has a grist on the battlefield because yeah. of the soul cauldron and the token that's already acting as a grist and so it's not that the magus is really inhibiting him because if you look at what if you look at what jarvis's hand is sure it'd be nice to have wall of roots and ignoble hierarchy in the battlefield but it's not entirely necessary at this stage of things so you know if we had an advantage bar if such a thing were to exist uh, <laughs> i would say that yeah pretty okay. heavy advantage here for jarvis and jake agrees that it's going to concede the game right now interesting So there we go. Into, sorry. Yeah, you know, you're fine. We're going to just move on to the sideboards here a little bit. Uh, again, both of these players kind of expected one another to play these decks. They talked about it during our little player conference right at the top. Uh, Jarvis was expecting Jake to play Actos uh, Evoke, which, duh, he won a Pro Tour with it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely. too if I were Jake. And then uh, Jake had the expectation of Jarvis playing a decent amount of Yogmoth recently. So to see him play that, especially when he's played it quite a bit previously, is not that big of a surprise either. Uh, so both players have kind of geared their decks around this matchup, and that's why you see the sideboarding happening so quickly. One, <laughs> they expected each other to play this deck, but two, uh, Emma, they've already played each other in this event yep. earlier today. We've already we've already seen it happen, so they yeah. just know what they they're just speed running at this point. Pretty much, um, they just want to jam. Now you take a look at Jake's hand, and this is a quintessential scam hand. Very scam hand. Yeah, you've got your one lander. You've got your grief. You got your black card. You got your not dead after all. Yep. So you got all that. Last round. You've got the you've got the follow up thought sees if you want to if you want to keep that card. Pick something else up. Yeah. So Jake's hand is exactly where you want to be. Like he's going to exile the shielder. Not much of a surprise there, given how expensive it is. Yep. And we're probably going to take this grist as well. Yeah, I mean, Grist is a, Grist is a, Grist. I would, if, if I'm Jake in this spot, once I take a look at the hand, I'm going to just take the cheap cards. Um, yeah. You know, so Young Wolf, Bite the Dust. The next cheapest card is, the next cheapest card, excuse me, is Scavenging Ooze. 
uh, which I think you can make a sound argument for, and especially because he's keeping the thought season hand, uh, Grist will be next. Yeah. And Jarvis is just going to have nothing but lands by the end of next turn, <laughs> unfortunately. Yep. So this this really comes down to, as Jarvis is going to think about, do I want to play Misty Rainforest or Blooming Marsh? Uh, which is, you know, it's it's a decision worth at least thinking about here. Absolutely. Um, Jake has drawn a copy of Pluto Delta, and and Jake doesn't know that Jarvis has drawn a Paseju. That's the only thing that he doesn't know. Um, hmm. But he still might say, I want a thought he's here. But if he went the Dothy Voidwalker route just to maximize his use of mana, that would make a lot of sense, and I think that's what he's done. Indeed. At this point, you've got the full seed back up, right? So you just want to be aggressive. Yeah, you want to get it. You kind Jarvis of wanna... isn't Jarvis oh, isn't I... doing a lot <laughs> outside of just, well, we know Jarvis's hand, but he's, he's not going to be doing a whole lot because he's just got these lands. This Grist is going to get a full seed fairly soon, and these besieges don't do a whole lot unless you really want to take out this Wicked Roll token. Yeah, which, and now... Again, now the thoughts is going to take care of the Grist. Jake's going to see that it's, you know, the coast is clear. My opponent has nothing going on. Uh, the Grist has been exiled because the Voidwalker's on the battlefield, so there's no Agatha's Soul Cauldron nonsense. And if Jake ever elects to pivot and wants his own Grist, he's now got access to one. So uh, this is why people really like this deck. Yes, it's it, do, it does one thing and it does it pretty well. There's also super aggressive because you have these grease with menace. You know, shadow is really awkward to deal with, especially in modern. So I can see this game not lasting very long. Yeah, with Jarvis down the one, one draw step left here. Multiple copies of Besaju in hand that aren't doing anything. Jarvis will draw a card. I'm not even sure what his best draw is in this instance, but uh, I promise it's not Young Wolf. <laughs> yeah. And that was a very quick game, too. Oh! And Groot. And Scam just did the Scam thing. That's right. On a one-lander, who knew? Well, uh, if anybody knew it was Jake, that's yeah, for absolutely. sure. absolutely. <laughs> that's very true. Who has done that sort of thing to a lot of people, uh, most recently under the bright lights of Pro Tour the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Barcelona last summer. Did it to everybody that weekend in his very first Pro Tour. Hell of achievement. All right, let's take a look at these hands here for game number three. If you're Jake, you're mm -hmm. looking for another grief draw. You don't have one of those. Jarvis looking to build a critical mass with his deck, and his hand is Got slow, it. but it does allow him to kind of do that sort of thing, which is, you know, Young Wolf, Cauldron, Yawgmoth, mm -hmm. you. So it's all kind of there, as both players look like they're going to keep their hand. Yeah. This pithing needle for Jake is also really important. It's going gonna, it's gonna... to... It's a good answer to this, Agatha Soul Cauldron. But you can just also discard it to the Sources. Yeah, not a bad draw here for Jake with the Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is rarely a bad draw. And it's <laughs> gonna take that, it's gonna take that Soul Cauldron, which means that Pithy Needle could be on a Yogmoth duty this game. Absolutely. If in doubt, you just want to name the namesake card. And given the draw of Wall of Roots here uh, by Jarvis. You know, Jake would have loved to this turn play Dothy Voidwalker and then play Pithy Needle the following turn. Uh, but I think, he, well, I was going to say he would be in incentivized to grief. cast it. But uh, <laughs> this grief, this grief might change some things. A pretty tasty top deck. Yeah, because now what we can do is, is if you're Jake, you can, you if you want, you can go evoke, you can go Voidwalker and then grief you. Decide what you want to exile, and then the Void Walker is exiled, and then maybe I use my Void Walker to do that. Jake does indeed have a lot of options here. Also, it's just going to be a hell of an aggressive clock as well. Double double Void Walker and grief. Um, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty strong board state, especially when Jarvis just doesn't have a lot left to work with. He has a very sad swamp in hand. So you're going to see the grief nonsense here, right? So there, mm -hmm. uh, Jake used Dothy Voidwalker for the Evoke on Grief. Not dead after all. Now here comes Pithy Needle. Again, curious what to name here if you want to go with Grist, if you want to go with uh, Yogmoth. Yogmoth. It's going yeah, to be Yogmoth. 
over Grist. Okay, interesting. Let's see if that comes back to punish. There's an Orcish Quill Monsters. And Jarvis chips in for a whole one damage because he can. <laughs> oh, he's actually... Never mind, he's going to swing in for two here with these two young wolves. Uh, this Orcish Bowmasters is going to be on blocking duty when this grief uh, gets in the red zone. Legion's End is an, or, is an interesting draw step here. Yes, it does deal with these young wolves. Now, one thing I'm checking here is with Orcish Bowmasters, deals one damage to any target. So you can, I want to make sure, enters mm -hmm. the battlefield whenever an opponent draws a card except for the first one. We're supposed to, deals one damage to any target. So you can target your own thing with Bowmaster. If you really you wanted, wanted to. to. Yeah, to kind of counteract that uh, that Legion's End. But Legion's End was not played and Bowmaster's on the battlefield, so that conversation is over. Yeah. Looks like Jarvis is getting aggressive here. Yeah, I mean, look, a, a good way to kind of manage a game when you don't have a lot going on is just to try to kill your opponent as fast as possible. Uh, we saw Jake do that very effectively in the last game, and Jarvis, yep. with his ragtag group of creatures, is <laughs> trying to do that this game. <laughs> it's a very ragtag group of creatures there. It's just a lot of back and forth of aggression here. Um, Jake wanting that third land, ideally, just for this fable, but this Legion's End is going to do some work targeting this young wolf and the other young wolves that are in play. Now, I think Jarvis is probably going to hurry up and grab a Dryad Arbor here because, again, we are racing. And oh, it's actually going to be oh, a surveil okay. land. Okay, so I will correct myself. He wants to improve his draw step instead of trying to race. I mean, for what it's worth, he'd be losing the race. So I understand why he did what he did. And now he did. Catacombs is can not get Dryad Arbor here. He can, but don't forget that right now, Jarvis is sitting at eight. There's a Grief and a Void Walker. So that would be Another seven. Grief. And then <laughs> sacking the fetch land would bring him down to one. So Jake yeah. is just going to keep on keeping on. And now we'll see the Dried Arbor. So there's gonna... a triple block. Okay. Interesting. Bad and news. Not dead after all. Yep. <laughs> Breaking news. And you, you hope in that instance that, Jar, uh, that it, Jarvis is hoping that Jake doesn't have something like that, which is, of course, going to yeah. bring back the again. Also going to trigger that wicked roll. Uh, and now the Void Walker, of course, is going to come through for its points of damage. So uh, yeah. Jarvis is going to need one heck of a draw step. And I don't know if Cord of Call is it. it. Can yeah. cord for th we can Cord for three, but is Cord for three enough? Uh, get you Grist. Grist doesn't do anything. It can get you Bowmasters, which doesn't do a ton. It can get you Scavenging Ooze, uh, which you can... Okay, so if you Scavenging Ooze, if you... Uh, one, two, th one, two, three, four, five. So you use your four mana plus your Wall of Roots. You use the mana and don't convoke it. You court a Calling for Ooze. And then you have a 2 2 and an 0 3. You can double block the grief. The problem is, is that you're going to end up killing the grief. And that oh, means you're going to end like up taking too much damage. Decided to concede there. So Jake Beasley wins that one.